I'm Jeff Vogel for ArtBuzzTV.com. We are really having an exciting evening at one of one of the premier art galleries in South Florida. We're at the Paul Fisher Gallery on Flamingo Drive in West Palm Beach. And as you can tell, there is a tremendous amount of activity going on in back of me because everyone, everyone is completely and totally excited about this exhibit of photographs being presented. They're, they're photographs by Patrick McMullen. And it's an incredible, incredible collection of photos of everyday people and celebrities that we've all lived with throughout the generations. This is really a multi-generational exhibit of photographs that capture capture a way of life in America that really can't be replicated anywhere else in the world. So we're, we're hoping here at the Paul Fisher Gallery in West Palm Beach to get a chance to speak with the, the artist, the photographer himself, Patrick McMullen, who, believe it or not, has been going around the room taking photographs of the very people who have come tonight to see his photographs. It's, it's an amazing circle of the most creative elements in a person's mind because he seems to live and breathe imagery. In fact, he's just a few feet away from me right now about to take photographs of two of the people who have come to the exhibit this evening to see his fantastic collection of photographs. And so we're going to get a chance to speak with him in just a moment. This is absolutely an exciting night. We've got him. The photographer himself, Patrick. This is an exciting night, isn't it? It's a very exciting night. And now being in Florida, and particularly in Palm Beach, uh, is, is so great, you know? And uh, this collection is my collection of work that I bought and collected, also interspersed in some pictures that are, are by myself. And it came about really because I had to do construction in my brownstone in New York, the bottom floor, and everything had to come out anyway. So a friend of mine said, well, I'd love to show it, you know, for the summer. And then Paul is a friend of mine. He's been wanting me to do something down here. So what, I, what we've done is we, it was all wrapped up. I was able to just send it, right? And uh, anyway, um, uh, I also, he said, well, let's put some of your work in. So you'll have to do a little, I have some of my work there, some of my books and, and all that. So, you know, being here is, is uh, great. Yeah. When did you first pick up a camera? Yeah. Well, you know what? My family are always very photo-oriented. My uh, uncle John, who is older than my father, always took pictures during the war and everything. And my father always bought the newest cameras. So when I was around seven, uh, he bought a Polaroid. And we used to run around and take pictures together. It was something we did, father and son. And the great thing about Polaroid is you'd see it right away. Yeah. So you would keep the attention of a seven-year-old, you know? Like seven seconds is all you got. So a minute was a long time. But by the end of the day, we'd have everything out and we could see it. And I really do think that that had a big effect on me being a photographer. As a collector, what do you look for in a photograph? It, it has that, for me, it's just either the price is important, you know, because I can't afford a million dollar picture, uh, although I'd like to. But what I, what I really look for is something that has that double take, where you really want to look at it again, or where it tells a story, or you want to make up a story, or it just calms me. You know, there's certain pictures that are very calming, or it's eerie, or it frightens me. Sometimes that's good too, you know, if it... it Evoking an emotion, though. It's an emotion to me, you know, or a mystery, or... But I, I just love photography, and, you know, over the years people have given me things, and I've bought things, and I got them from thrift stores, or I bought them in big auctions. I mean, some of my photography here, it could cost me $20,000. Can you imagine? Like, for me, that's a lot. Yeah. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Jim. Together we are the Live Now Real Estate Team at Remax Associated Realty. We know the Sebastian area real estate market very well. 
But we also know that buying or selling a home can be very serious business. But together we can reduce the stress and even have fun in the process. Along with our hundreds of satisfied clients, we really want you to live now and be happy too. Contact us at thelivenowteam.com. See you soon. See Arts in Depth with Barbara Hoffman, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 and 10 p.m. What impresses me is you've been going around taking photographs of the people coming to look at your photographs. Well, I like to look at them later, all the people, and have their names so I can remember. Oh, right, because it can't, for me, photos are a great source of memory. And for myself, it's very much an immediate memory. Because I'm like, then later on tonight, I'll be looking at everybody. Okay, but seriously, is this an addiction? I mean, do you I have a problem? Is. I think it's addiction. My friend Ralph Gibson, who's a famous photographer, said, but what do you do with all those pictures? And that's not for me to worry about. No, you know, uh, we've got at my house, we've got boxes and boxes of photographs of uh, my mother's family, my father's family, dating back to the 1930s. Oh, I love the 1930s. I buy collections like that at, at stores or art fairs. Now, or, now I know what to do with those boxes. Yeah, you can sell them. And if you, if you look through them with a very critical eye, you might be able to say, that's a really good image. And a lot of them are out of focus or they're ripped up, but I, I sometimes buy a whole family collection because I can't imagine letting, leaving grandma out. Right. I mean, I could show you some of the things that I buy. I mean, that, that, that's the essence of, of visual depiction is, is really to preserve a, yeah. a moment in time. But even other people's things is very very fascinating to me because I start to go, that's the cousin. Because you'll see if you buy it, like I recently just bought a collection of photography in Long Island and it was not much. Uh, I have a house out in Long Island as well. And I was able to look at all of them and understand who they were, that they were Catholic, that they were, he had one, two sons, two, one son, one daughter. You know, there was even in there like a DWI or something, like this different interesting facets of this person's life clippings when they were a little when she was a young girl and so I've, I'm fascinated by photography it tells a story that you don't know completely but you get enough of a sense you have uh, photographed ordinary people and celebrities both any in particular stand out in your mind well a lot you know a lot of people stand out in my mind I I love photographing people that are dressed interestingly obviously uh, good-looking people of course I love I mean you, you fall in love for a second with people you know uh, celebrities are always fun because they have a certain kind of veneer on them like that they so they like being uh, like said uh, can I take your picture yes and they'll go you know and so I like celebrities and uh, 98% of celebrities, if you ask them nicely and say, I'd like to take your picture, they're fine. They just want a second to compose, you know? So I always say, as a photographer, I'm very pro-choice, meaning that you don't have to have your picture taken, but if I ask to take your picture, to me, I'm honoring you. I'm honoring you and your memory, and you're part of a huge collection. What's, mo what's most important to you when you're, um, when you're composing a, a picture? Is it the composition, the framing, the lighting, the personality, the sure, story? Sure. No, no, I mean, all those things are important, of course. But really, it's getting it and getting it quick because many times with photography, there's that one moment that's just perfect. And we all photographers know what I'm talking about. We love getting that moment. So you just want to get it. And now, modern photography, you can see right away whether you got it so you can go back and go wait a minute wait a minute I gotta do that again yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and like the famous flag of I Iwo Jima did you ever see that movie it's a great movie about how they had to reenact because the flag looked too small right. so they had to make a bigger flag what? to give it that feeling such, such an iconic photograph yeah, but it was set up yeah. All right, but uh, I don't uh, mind. I like getting the real reality whenever yeah. I can. Well, a setup is my a, personality. A, like a studio shoot can go on yeah. for hours, and it can be like some. And I like don't don't get me wrong. I enjoy the picture of Madonna by late David LaChapelle. Now that was a setup, but it has the a feeling of randomness, you know. So it's basically putting a bunch of people together and then saying, "Now do this," or putting on music and. 
Is South Florida a second home for you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Hopefully it'll be a first home soon. As I, I just turned 60. But as Sylvester Stallone said, 60's the new 19. It is. Or at it, least the no, new 20. I love this great. He goes, 60? 60, 60's the new 19. Yeah. But I know what he meant, because it's like your old age, but it's the beginning of old age. What I really am impressed by you is the fact that you're going around photographing people. I would. Because you're adding to your collection all the oh, time. Yeah. Aren't you? Well, that's true. But I also, again, I want to know who everybody is. And I, and I often I do know them, and I, I forget. But the name, I'll go, oh, right, I know you. Well, how long will your uh, photographs be on exhibit here? I think they're going to be here for six weeks or Fantastic. more. And uh, I'm already adding to it. I went and bought four yeah. pieces today. Ah, good deal. But I, I, you know, I was over at the Peggy Adams thrift store. They have some beautiful things over there. Yeah. You know? Um, it, it's amazing what you can find that other people have e either discarded or oh, left they behind. They died and people yeah. would just, their job is to get rid of everything, you know? Yeah. Luckily, it, I mean, Peggy Adams the, the store was right near Flamingo Road where we we're at for Paul's Gallery. So literally, I got here at 4 o'clock and I said, I'm going to take a walk over there. Isn't that funny? Uh, there's a lot of photographs here taken in the 60s and 70s. Oh, yeah. And, and it really does capture the essence of those, those periods. Oh, it? and I'm not done collecting. Yeah. So a lot of people say, oh, I'm done collecting. I've had enough. But no, I, I still have, I'm still looking for my white whale. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, I've seen a few more people come in. You've got to get a picture you. Get, you got, oh, and uh, Alex also. Right here. Yes. I want to look for best TV. Stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics. In downtown Vero Beach, owner Patty Callahan prints it all. From color and black and white copies to blueprints, banners, signs, prints of paintings, and fine art. Patty makes restorations and creates outstanding graphic designs. Call Patty at 770-1521 or stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics at 2345 14th Avenue. Stop by for all of your printing needs at Patty's Printing and Graphics across from the old railroad station in downtown Vero Beach. Buzz TV Network is now the fastest growing new media outlet on the Space and Treasure Coast. Follow Buzz TV Network and tell a friend. Irina and Paul Fisher are with us. This is an exciting night, isn't it? This has been a fantastic night, and I think we're only about a quarter of the way through it. We've had a steady stream of people. We get pe It's funny, the crowd keeps turning over about every 40 minutes. We get the before dinner crowd, the after dinner crowd, the during dinner crowd. And I'm amazed at how many people we've had come through here whose pictures I recognize from magazines and from TV and, and films. We've got more Hollywood type of people in the room tonight than I've ever had in any of my gallery shows. But Patrick is such a, an iconic figure. Everybody knows him. There's literally thousands and thousands of people who can tell, who can honestly tell you they're Patrick's friend. He's had so many meaningful encounters through the years, and I'm seeing people that, you know, like from the heyday of Studio 54, from the Warhol crowd, and, you know, big collectors or artists or just people who are, you know, part of that great scene. But also, you know, he's the guy at the Vanity Fair Awards, at the Academy Awards, at every big event. So he can look around this room and everybody big and notable, I think he's photographed him at one time or another. Well, what's amazing is he's, he, he doesn't seem to know when to quit. He's, he's photographing all of the guests. Well, you know, it's funny. It's like people ask, well, what do you do to get away from all of this? You get, you know, when you're not, to get away from work, goes, this is what I always wanted to do. I just want to get up and do it again tomorrow. I'm not trying to get away. This is great. Why did you want to bring this exhibit here to West Palm? For the money and the fame uh, and the attention because what he's got in this collection it's so unique this collection is such a unique singular thing in American history of 20th century photography because here's one of the great photographers of the 20th century who had an amazing niche and over the last 40 years he and every other celebrated photographer whether it's Dave LaChapelle or Herb Ritz all the greats they see each other they meet each other they exchange work they sell each other work 
They gather each other's work, and then he, you know, he's got the eye. He's been everywhere. He's seen everything. He knows a great photo. So a lot of these are works that he's seen in auctions or on sale somewhere, and you know, gathered it into his collection. So this collection is somewhat eclectic, but the single common denominator that threads through every one of these important works is that it's something that Patrick has a personal connection to. So that makes it's a really unique singular event. I think what's really enjoyable for me is it's it's multi-generational and it's it's America through the decades, really. Yeah, it is. And it's beautiful, it's artistic, it's a little naughty, it's iconic. And, and some of like the great figures and the great beauties of the 20th century leading into the 21st century are in here. I mean, to see Sophia Loren and Madonna and Lady Gaga. What makes this a fun night for you? Oh, what does it make night? I would like to see this old people. It's just insane. We never had that. Uh, see, the crowd start coming at 6 o'clock. I came here, it's already like 75 people. It's 6 o'clock. It's amazing. Last count, by the way, was we had 250 people come through, and that's in the last hour. Before. You, you've got quite a season planned, haven't you? Oh yes, I do. I've got um, I've got a show coming up with Fiona I. She's a fantastic artist. She's, she lives in Monaco. Uh, her mother's a Palm Beacher. Big abstract expressionist, gorgeous works. Uh, another show I'm thrilled about is Takashi Taruya, a rising star, big time emerging artist out of Japan. I've got some of his work on exhibition in the small gallery room tonight. I have a show coming up with Steve Longo. Steve is very famous in the music world. He was John Entwistle's best friend, his musical director. Um, uh, and he's, he's famous as a drummer. He is in a band with Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick. Well, listen, it, it's getting crowded in here. You've got, you've got people to go see and say hello to. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jeff. Always, always a thrill to have Buzz TV in the house. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Jim. Together we are the Live Now real estate team at REMAX Associated Realty. We know the Sebastian area real estate market very well. And we also know that buying or selling a home can be very serious business. But together we can reduce the stress and even have fun in the process. Along with our hundreds of satisfied clients, we really want you to live now and be happy too. Contact us at thelivenowteam.com. See you soon. Join us for an adventure weekdays at 4.30 and 8.30 on Buzz TV Network. Charlie Camacho is with the House of Whitley, and you brought these incredible World War II binoculars. These are these are these are uh, German German naval binoculars, but we have them from Japan, from Russia, from all over the world. People are fascinated by them. They love them. Well, they're, they're completely refurbished. The optics are pristine, like if they were new, and people love it. They, they're like a piece of furniture that you can have in your home. But functional. But functional, of course. Functional art. You bring these and a lot of other fantastic, interesting right. objects we, to we exhibits. Do. Of course. Yeah, we also have 50 million year old fossils. Uh, we have uh, old uh, outboard motors from, from last century, from the, from the mid 50s to the early 1900s. Uh, we have, uh, we have an, an incredible Spanish artist that does three dimensional art but without using digital technology. It's all made of pieces of wood. It's incredible, incredible. Why do you think people are so fascinated by these, what seem to be artifacts from uh, the golden age of the 20th century? It's because it, it's, they're very real. They're, they're organic. They're, they, they, are, they are what they are. They don't pretend to be anything else. They've just been cared for you know, like like if they were furniture, like pieces of art. But they are, that's what it is. People look, either like them or they don't. What do people ask you about these binoculars in particular? Um, the, 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 the provenance, where they came from. The first question they usually ask is, what ship are they from? Yeah. And we never know, because we get them from a salvage yard. 
And so they, they're from decommissioned ships, and we get them, they're all painted, they're banged up, so they have to be refurbished and taken care of and restored. And it's kind of like restoring... An old car. Yeah. Yeah, it's like restoring an old car. So you must love what you do. You got to. <laughs> if, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. What got you involved in putting back life into something that has basically been discarded? Um, well, you know, art, you know, means a lot of things to different people. And there, there, we found that there's there, there's a, a room, there's room for this kind of older technology that was in its heyday state of the art. And, and it still is because it's not only beautiful but it's functional you can you can the optics are you know they were they were the best of the best at the time the german the german zeiss the japanese fuji you couldn't beat them and you bring these artifacts to exhibits like this at the paul fisher gallery and it really adds an extra dimension to the exhibit. I think it does. I think it grounds it a little bit. You know, it, 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 it brings back a little bit of history. You know, people, people like things that tell stories. And these tell stories. Each one of these, you can, you can imagine, you know, in the 1940s, the guys that were on this side were trying to kill the guys that were on this side. <laughs> So, it, you know, it's a, it's a grounding factor. And amazingly, it beckons you. Everybody wants to look through them. And touch them. That's why I always carry... <laughs> because everybody touches them. And they need to be polished. Yeah, no, but, you know, we encourage people to touch them. Well, we're here at the Paul Fisher Gallery but in West Palm. But how could people get more information about the artifacts that you have? We are at the Gallery of Amazing Things in Dania Beach, Florida, which is just south of the airport in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, our, we have a 50,000 square foot gallery on the ground floor and a 25,000 square foot museum on the second floor. So the first floor is a gallery. For, everything is for sale. The museum, nothing is for sale. That's fantastic. It's amazing. We also use it as event space. So if you want to have your bar mitzvah there, you can have your bar mitzvah, you can have a wedding, you can have... We've had everything, everything there from zoo animals to um, Hindu weddings. That's incredible. All right, is there a website people can go to? Yes, houseofwhitley.com. We got it. Enjoy tonight. Thank you. The Furniture Man is a locally owned business that has served the needs of the community of Vera Beach and Indian River County for over 30 years. Here at The Furniture Man, we offer fine pieces to furnish each and every room of your home. Specializing in Floridian style, come browse our selection of bedroom, dining room, patio, and living room. Come explore over 10,000 square feet of showroom where you can find mattresses, recliners, sofas, dining, and more. Visit us at 673 US 1 in Vero Beach, Monday through Saturday, for all of your furniture needs. Join Marsha Littlejohn nightly at 5 and 9 on VeroBuzzTV.com. Bruce, I was told by Paul Fisher that you're a very famous person, but I live under a rock, believe it or not. Well, I'm a little bit above the rock, but I'm not, I'm not sure about the fame. I'd rather have the fortune, but... Uh... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bruce, who are you and why are you? Well, I'm an artist that uh, lives and works uh, in downtown uh, West Palm Beach. Uh, I'm uh, honored to say that I was just inducted into the Florida Artist Hall of Fame. Um, and uh, I'm a working artist, that's what I do. Now, I'm also a writer for the Huffington Post of Art Reviews. So this kind of environment uh, at the Paul Fisher Gallery is the kind of thing that attracts me uh, to see what's going on. And um, this happens to be one of the great uh, exhibitions of the, of the season. Now, you, you just got here a little while ago? Yes. yes. So you really have not had a chance yet to actually look at most of these photographs. I actually previewed 
the show a couple of days ago, and um, uh, we're going to see if we can do a little uh, Huffington Post article on oh, it. That's fantastic. Yeah. What what impressed you the most about this exhibit? Well, I think uh, this is a slice of history that is uh, very hard to replace. Andy Warhol once said, "If Patrick, if you don't know who Patrick is, then you don't go out enough." Right. Patrick was a person. You're who talking was about me. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, Patrick was a person who was out every night. Andy Warhol was once asked to uh, host Saturday Night Live, and he said, "So that means I've got to come in." He, he said, "Well, why why are people watching TV on Saturday night? They should be out." So the essence of Patrick is that he was out every night capturing the scene of Studio 54, the Palladium, whatever. And this show represents a collection, a kind of celebration of his vision where he's traded artists like Harry Benson or he has wonderful pictures of Marilyn Monroe or uh, Bianca Jagger. Every picture seems to have a measure of fame to it. And, and so in this community, there is kind of an added dimension because many of the celebrities on the walls have a connection to Palm Beach or certainly have visited here. Yeah. And also, Patrick really is considered the number one society photographer in New York City and in Palm Beach with a very large uh, professional staff. He, he's the best of the best. And so it's such an interesting opportunity to see what he's collected, let alone what he's right. photographed. Yeah. And so I think it's an exciting evening. Um, yeah, what, what, what intrigues him? What, what the kind of pictures that he's attracted to say a lot about him as a photographer, doesn't it? Well, I think so. I, I, I think when you're a guy like Patrick and you're out and everybody knows who you are, you have the pick of the litter in terms of who you're going to photograph. Nobody's going to turn you down. But I think in, in connection with that, Patrick has a way with people that makes them feel comfortable. He has a vision. He's shooting, you know, hundreds of photographs every single day of his life. And his favorite thing is to go home and sort them out until he falls asleep. I mean, this is it. This well, is... You, you said, you know, he was out every night in New York. Well, he's out tonight in West Palm, and he's still taking pictures. Yeah, no, that's it. It's like, uh, I remember uh, I had Chuck Manjone at my house once, and we decided to walk to a restaurant, and he had his trumpet with him. Yeah. So it's the same thing. I think that, uh, you know, there are guitarists that don't go out without playing the guitar, and so Pat Patrick's symbol and his life and his entire history is based on the Camry's never without it. And that's a good sign. Are you going to give this exhibition a good review? Well, I'm going to have to look at it more carefully <laughs> first, but it would be very difficult not to give this thing a really uh, uh, ambitious review. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very nice much. To I you. totally appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Good night, everybody. Thanks to the Paul Fisher Gallery in West Palm Beach. This is an incredible exhibit of artwork by Patrick McMullen. His collection and his photographs all here on display. You've got to come here to the Paul Fisher Gallery to take a look at this fantastic exhibit. For ArtBuzzTV.com, I'm Jeff Vogel. Thanks for watching. Now that health reform is law, you cannot be denied health insurance coverage, but you can pay too much. As a single mom, I was convinced that we could not afford health insurance until I spoke to the people from ICANN, who told me that I qualify for a special enrollment and a subsidized rate. Now I get so much more for so much less. Call now and get the ICANN mobile app free. So don't wait another minute. Call ICANN, get covered, save money.